Hey everyone, Wags here from Eagle Dynamics, and welcome to this first video of the Lightning Pod for the Hornet. In this video, we're going to take a look at some of the basics and also using it for GPS guided weapons. Uh, later on, we'll take a look at it using it for laser guided bombs, laser mavericks, LSS modes, and other functionality. Now, this is still very much a work in progress with a lot of really cool things coming up. Let's get started. Okay, so we're in the cockpit now. Let's learn how to use the targeting pod. Uh, first, let's go ahead and start it up. So we're gonna go to the sensor panel here and we're gonna move the FLIR switch from off to on. Up on the right DDI on the TAC page, we now have a FLIR option at push button six. And right now we have a not timed out message indicating that it's uh, not quite ready yet. Mostly just cooling down that FLIR sensor also indicated by the crossed out ready uh, indication. So we have an airspeed and our Mach and our barometric altitude and we can declutter those off if we wish to. But while this is getting ready, let's go ahead and set up our GPS weapon. In this case, we have a J82, which is a GBU 38 500 pound class JDAM. And now as you may recall in a previous video, when we did a target of opportunity attack or TOO attack, it was based on the target being a designated waypoint. Well, now we have this handy tool called a targeting pod where we can designate anything. So let's go ahead and set mode to TOO, or defused instantaneous, JDM display, and mission. And as you see, we have no coordinates yet for that TOO attack, and that's what we're gonna be using the targeting pod for. Still waiting on the pod. So on the HUD, we see we're at uh, about 24 and a half thousand feet which is a good operating altitude uh, for pod work uh, mainly because it minimizes uh, mask situations where the pod is trying to see through the aircraft or a store to the target area uh, the higher you are generally the better you're off and uh, steep bank angles and also deep uh, at your six can also be kind of big blind spots for the targeting pod as well so best to avoid those if you can and uh, the JDAM we're using is a GB38, but everything we're talking about here applies to all the JDAM types, as well as the JSALs. Uh, although with the JSAL, with its much longer range, it's more inclined towards uh, pre-planned targets rather than something you're gonna do using the pod. Okay, and speaking of the pod, it is up. And the first thing we need to do is, because we're gonna be doing a lot of slewing, we need to go ahead and assign the TDC to it. And as you might imagine, because the pod is on the right DDI, we'll go right on the sensor control switch. And now the diamond indicating that the TDC is assigned to it. So let's talk about some of the functions. Uh, first, we have two different field of views, wide and narrow, which are uh, toggled through push button six. But we also have the HOTAS function where we can do a short press of less than 0.8 seconds on the FLIR field of view button and that will do the same thing. Now, we have two different cameras in the uh, pod, both a daylight CCD camera as well as the infrared FLIR, and those can be toggled with push button one. Now, we're actually in the FLIR, note that we have both white hot and black hot polarity as well as an autofocus, but autofocus will come here in a bit. And the uh, FLIR CCD toggle can also be done through uh, the HOTAS with a long press, meaning more than 0.8 seconds on the FLIR uh, field of view switch. But let's go back to the CCD. Now, of course, we can uh, slew the camera in azimuth indicated by degrees here. So we can go say three, four degrees to the right, four degrees to the left, back to the center. And then here's our elevation look. Right now we're five degrees down. Let's bring it down a bit further. And now we're at negative nine. And if we do a field of view narrow, brings us in. And it looks like some vehicles over here. So we can actually use the zoom function now. And these are, this is done on push buttons four and five. And we can zoom in. But you can also use the uh, antenna elevation wheel on the real stick as well to do this. Looks like a shulk over here. Let's go to FLIR. Let's go white hot, that's better. Now at this point we're in area track, ATRK. What we can do is we can do a point track on this now by going right on the sensor control switch. 
so indicated by the box and now if that target moves so will the track with it also indicated by PTRK here now at this point we need to set up this target point as our TO attack point so to do that we're going to press down uh, not aft on the TDC button and we did that we now have our coordinates pop up for a TO attack and we also have our countdown timer for our JDAM on the target of just 30 seconds away. We also have our target point down here indicated by the diamond. So we'll wait for our end range and then we'll go ahead and drop a GBU on the Shilka. And when using the pod and guided weapons, uh, barometric hold and ATC cruise are strong your friends. Okay, in range and bomb away. And in uh, later videos, we're going to talk about using the pod with uh, laser guided bombs for Maverick, as well as the LSS mode indicated here. And other functions, of course, will be coming to the pod, like the air-to-air -air mode, uh, additional HUD symbology, uh, some different reticles, and some other items uh, to further flesh it out. And right now I'm just using HOTAS command to move the zoom in and out. And the little diamond here indicates the pointing angle of the pods. Right now it's, it's pointing directly ahead of us and down. Uh, but if it was off here, it would be down and off the right wing, down and off the left wing, and then behind. And this is a pretty good indication of trying to avoid some mask potential. Any second now. And we can also see how far down the pot is looking with the angle here, almost straight down at this point. And we're passing over it. And there's the hit. So as you can see, uh, combining the targeting pod with GPS weapons in TOO mode, uh, it's a very powerful system. Anyhow, folks, I hope you enjoyed this video. And I'm looking forward to bringing you these uh, next ones. We're going to talk more in depth about the pod and its capabilities. Thanks for watching.